Good. So um, I'm going to share with you from 1 Samuel 12, verse 14, if you can please go with me there. And just a few notes. Take a few notes, please. Take a few notes. God wants to walk with you. He simply wants to walk with you. I want to read you verse 14. If you, if you fear the Lord and serve and obey him and do not rebel against his commands and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God. Good. That's good then. <laughs> this is the NIV. So yeah, in principle that's good. That's good to do. That's what the prophet is saying there. First point, yes, I want to follow the Lord. I want to follow God. But it's not just following him as a decision. Yes, Pharisee, he made a decision to follow. Guys with an agenda, guys want to see, whoa, all the signs, all the miracles, I want to follow. I want to see what's going to happen. Oh, I need to hear what this man is saying. He's a, he's a wise man. I want to follow. Oh, I can find some answers, some wisdom from this man. Yes, I want to follow. Or what is your agenda to follow? God wants you to follow, but in a certain, in a certain way. In a certain way. Please, let's write that down. First of all, if you fear the Lord, that's the first basis, basis of everything. If you fear the Lord. Now, fear will take you away from him so that you will not follow him, or fear will draw you towards him. There's a fear that will draw you unto the Lord because it's a fear where it's about worship. It's about, wow, who is this awesome God? A fear, you are captivated by that fear, by this awesome God, the fear of God. And there's a fear where you run away. Now, they had to walk with God, Adam and Eve, because that was his desire. He made them to walk with him, to enjoy him and him to enjoy them. And then when they made certain decisions, in the bush, there they go. Now I want to say behind what bush, not George Bush or this bush, or behind what bush are you hiding? No, we're not hiding anymore. But certain areas in our lives we can keep behind the bush where we not come out with it. Maybe we could feel ashamed. But maybe certain areas, I just leave it there. I don't deal with certain things. I just leave it there. I feel it's okay. I feel safe. I feel comfortable with those areas in my life behind the bush. But God wants me to bring my everything. My everything. So Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? God confused? God didn't know where he was? Oh, come on. God knew exactly where they were. <laughs> Adam, where are you? I'm confused, Adam. <laughs> no. God is calling you. Rachel, where are you? You know exactly where you are. You know exactly with every area where you are. When you think about your finances and your provision, God's saying, Esther, where are you? When you think about certain areas, God will say, where are you? Are you walking with me in all of this? When you're looking at your challenges, and while looking at your challenges, the, the, the voice, first of all, is not how to deal with your challenges. The voice, first of all, is where are you? Are you going to walk with me through this? So God about finances, where are you? Let's sit together. Or let's walk together through this thing about your finances. Let's do this together. Are you with me? You bring an area before the Lord. God's going to ask you, where are you? Let's, let's look at this together. Let's deal with this together. Through Isaiah, God said, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord your God. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Come, let us reason together. Come, let us walk together. Come, let us sit together. Are you with me? 
He simply wants to walk with you. He simply wants you to follow, but not just behind there. In that sense. Are you with me? But to walk and to follow. But the more you know him, in the beginning and many, in many areas, many areas of your life, you need to follow him like this. You need to follow. But the more you know how he walks, the way he walks, what he says, you, the more you know his heart, the more you walk with him. And the more you will just know we're going to the left. And in this situation, we're going to the right. Because you just start to know his heart. Um, is it anticipate his move? Is that the right word? Because you start to know his heart, know how he works. And that's the point where he wants us to be, to walk with him in that way. But then learn how to follow so that you can learn how he walks, where he walks, in what way he walks. Amen. Let's trust God for that, man. Let's trust God for that. Is it good? Okay. So, first point. Now, yeah, we've looked at it basically. Fear. Fear, what will we say? It must be the foundation to follow God. It's the foundation why hell is full of demons. And why hell and all the demonic forces will have a certain destiny. This is foundational. The foundation is you live in fear because you know your destiny. But you and me, we live in the fear of the Lord and build based on the foundation of who he is because we know our destiny. Because the fear of the Lord, that is, I respect him for who he is. I know who he is. In the fear of God, it's there because I know who he is. If you know who's speaking to you, Jesus said to the woman, if you know who spoke to you, who is speaking to you, then you would have asked me the living water. There's a certain perspective, there's a certain way that you will speak to God. There's a certain way that you will build your life based on your revelation of who he is. Things will be shaken, things in America and all over the world, it, things will be shaken more and more and more. But more and more and more, it needs to happen. Because more and more in the, before the, the, everything will be ending, before the end, hell must be exposed. And God must show his glorious church. He must show the foundation of who he is. He must show how the church will build based on the knowledge of who he is. He must show how his children can build a life because they know their father, because they know the son of God, because they know him. And just that, not because they know everything that's happening and why this is happening and why that and why this political party and why that, not because they know everything, but because they know him. That is the thing in the end time. There's a lot of deception more and more. There's a lot of things that will manifest. There's a lot of things. Come on, man. Even in America and certain guys that stands for certain things. That we feel how, ish, what's going to happen now? Some guys that just stand even with, in some of the states, abortion allowed. Not abortion. There's the baby. Just leave him to die. And you call that because of the right of the mother. I say, how sick the society become. But all the vulgar from hell will be manifested. But as hell will offer up and try to bring the offering of millions and millions and millions of innocent babies and try to bring that blood sacrifices, no, it will be also more than that, so much more than that. The blood sacrifice of Christ will be revealed. And the impact of that, what happened on the cross. Are you with me? Are anybody alive? So if it's John 14, then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, everyone who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do. But even... 
greater works, greater than just walking on, on the water and tell the storm to be still. Five loaves of bread, two fish, 5,000, 7,000 eat. Hello. Greater than all of those, those works. So much greater you will do. We are not in that season yet. But it's becoming that season where we're supposed to know how to do that. But that is for the church that understands the maturity of not how to take the glory for themselves. Where it's all about him and him alone. The church will come into that place to have the capacity through humility to facilitate miracles that is so amazingly, shockingly gripping nations, man. Really, I'm serious. I hope you will be part of it as you allow your life to be transformed by the Holy Spirit and make a stand for Him. Make a stand for Him. To follow Him, first of all, you need to fear the Lord. If you want to follow him the way that he wants to be followed, first of all, you will respect him. You will fear him. And in this fear, you will wow about him. This is the wow about him. Devil know who he is. He knows who this God is. And therefore, he flees. The more you come to know, the more you are drawn. The more you are drawn to him. So to follow is, first of all, I follow because I'm drawn to him in worship. Because I'm drawn towards him in love, in this adoration, in this I'm captivated by who he is. That's the first step why I want to follow him. And why I follow him when I ask Holy Spirit to purify my motives in following Christ. Let's ask that. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to purify. He's the fresh water. He's the fountain of life. He's the rain, but also, he's also the holy fire. And I say, take me through that fire, Lord. Purify, purify, so that it will be awesome gold coming forth through my life. Let that be so in Jesus' name. Amen? How to follow? Follow from a place of relationship. You can write that down. You must write some things down. Hey. Follow from the place of relationship, not with an agenda. The more you follow him, the more the enemy needs to flee, I said this morning. The more you follow him, the more the enemy needs to flee. You can walk with a lot of things. You can walk with your bitterness. You can walk with, walk with depression. You can walk with negativity. You can walk with lust. You can walk with pride. You can walk with... Issues. You can walk with this religion. You can walk this with a superior uh, superiority in your spiritual evaluation of everybody and <clears throat> every church. You can walk with that demonic force. But you know, when you start to walk with God, that thing cannot walk with God. So the more you start to walk with God, the more that thing needs to go. He needs to flee. He needs to flee. You don't even fight him. You start more and more to walk with God. You start more to be drawn into the place where he is. Then out he needs to go. He has no place there. He cannot because you're coming more in the fear of the Lord into a place where he fears the Lord and needs to leave. Hello? With fear he needs to flee. With fear you need to be drawn in. You will be drawn in. To where he is. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. In the fear of the Lord, I can have a lot of reasoning. You know, you reason with, with someone that you don't always have, how can I say, this major respect for. But this one, if you know, whatever he's going to say is going to be wisdom. It's going to be the ultimate. It's going to be the answer. If he says this, then that's it. And so in the fear of God, the more the fear of God is on me, the more still I can become before the Lord, getting to his word and whatever you say. God, if I understand it or not, I take it. That's it. That's it. Job, very, he can say a lot of things about God, and in a lot of ways he said a lot of good things. Where at the end God said, Job, Job, pray for your friends because they spoke a lot of rubbish 
but you spoke a lot of things that were right. That's now my translation. Okay. But when the prophet came, the prophet said to Job, Job, stand still, be still, and behold. Stand still and behold. So in the fear of God is coming to the place where you can behold who he is. Are you with me? So he had a lot of reasoning. He could say a lot of things. But then God came and said, okay, while you can say such a lot of things and reason about a lot of things, let me go and sit. I will sit. Come, Job. You remember we talked about this? I will sit, Job. Come and teach me. Because we can be so clever in all our reasonings and all our answers in how we will follow him. Or how we will not follow him. And how we will follow certain guys politically. And how we will follow, because God gave us brains, man. He gave us some way how to use my intellect. And God gave it to me how to use. Om my gezonde verstand te gebruik. How do you say that in English? There's not a saying, such a saying, eh? Okay, how to use my, my mind effectively. Okay, so therefore I can reason. Yes, certain facets, yes. But God said, okay, since you have all this reasoning, I will sit, come Job, and teach me. God said, when he started to speak to Job, where were you when I made that? Where were you? Where did you give me counsel in how to make that? Where were you in all of these things? And at the end of the day, the fear of God came on Job. You will see the fear of God on your life when you are more teachable, when you are more silent in a respect for God and in a respect of what is God wanting to say to me through this man. This man is saying something to me, but he's saying it like a clown or he's saying it in, in, in a wrong way. But if the fear of God is on me, I will not just take offense. I will ask, God, what are you saying to me? Because you are my master. You are my Lord. I respect you. I'm in your hands. And you don't waste time with me. So if this man is manifesting like this, and he says, you are doing this and this and this and this and this, in all of that, what are you saying to me? I don't have to get in, I don't need to get involved in that, on that platform, in that type of reasoning and arguments with that guy. No, but what are you saying to me? If you want to follow him, first, let the fear of God be on your life. If, by God's definition of follow. If you follow me the way that I want to be followed, then you will first be moved by who I am. You will first be moved to say, wow, this awesome God. And for into eternity, that is how you will stand. You will build your house on the rock, and the rock is the revelation of who he is. Who am I? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, blessed are you because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. Blessed are you. Happy are you when Father reveals to you so many things from heaven. But on the revelation of the fact that you know who I am. On that revelation, I will build my church. Not the revelation that you know exactly when will what happen in your life. And what is the answers for all the things happening out there? No, not based on that I'm going to build my church. But based on the fact that you know who I am. Based on that, I will build my church. So if the, the way that you know him, the revelation that you have about who he is, only on that, God will build his church and a home for him with you. Are you with me? This is eternal life. The fact that you know and understand prophecy and understand how to live and have the wisdom for everything. No. This is eternal life. That they may know you and the one that you have sent. That they may know the Father and Jesus, the one that the Father has sent. John 17, verse 3. You remember that. Are you with me? Ah, somebody say amen. 
Okay. Just after this chapter, we find uh, 1 Samuel 13, where Saul lost everything. Lost everything. I need to fear God and serve him only. And then, if I then serve him, I will obey him. And in all of that, what happened? Saul feared the Philistines. He was in the pattern. He was waiting. He was waiting for God. He was waiting because Samuel did not yet come, but the offering must be made unto the Lord. And it's important for Saul that the offering must be made unto the Lord before we go to war. And even your agenda is in the sense of your, the pattern in your life is right. You are waiting so that what must happen will happen. So that you can carry on and have your breakthrough. But then it doesn't happen immediately. And then it happens at number 99. At number 99. If you don't understand the timing and in your life... The fed upness or the fear about the circumstances overrule the fear of God. Overrule the fear of God. Then what? You will abort your destiny for you, for your children, for their children. Yes, praise God in the new covenant. Yes, praise God with the blood of Christ that it's a new day. Doesn't matter the mistakes of the parents, but if the children don't they cannot come back to God or don't come back to God. They will walk under the curse of the mistakes of the parents. You don't slay Goliath, the children will face Goliath. It's just obvious. It's just uh, logical. It's just the way it's going to be. And they, most probably there will be more than one Goliath by that time. Are you with me? But let us deal with the Goliath today and decide... Who will be feared? Goliath or God? Based on the revelation of who he is, you will deal with Goliath. David knows. He knows he's God. And therefore, who are you? Who are you that you come against God and his people? Okay. Okay. Zechariah 6 verse 12. It says, Behold the man, look at the man, keep in sight the man, watch the man. Zechariah 6 verse 12. You've written that down. We're going to look at that. Amen. Behold the man that's all about worship, to be captivated, to be arrested by the Holy Spirit. So this is stop and see. This is if you want to follow, first watch. You cannot follow if you don't know who he is. Because otherwise you will not recognize him in different certain situations. The more you know him, the more you will be able to see him in different situations. If you know him really, you will see him in the success and your success will not be your curse and your downfall. If you know him who he is, you will see him in the, in the, in the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You can see him in the shadow. Why? Because in the light, you, you came to know him in detail. You know him when, when you saw him in the light. You could see and you learned about who he is and the way that he moves, the way that he speaks. Hello? So that when in that, in that valley where you experience this darkness, you can still see, you can still hear, you can still know where he is. And that's how the church will have to be. Where the church needs to go. In the end times. More and more in the season. Because sometimes there will be valleys. There will be darkness. There will be shadow of death. A shadow of destruction. And in that place. Even though we will go through. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, but I will behold him. I will behold him. The fear of God will be on me, not any fear for any darkness. Amen? You take notes? Yeah, I will. Zander?
Ich bin jetzt nur das, ne? Yolandi, Sophia. Guys, we need to know that. Amen? We need to know that. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. First of all, is to wow about your God. That's the first step. You want to follow me? I want to see how you're excited about me. I want to first of all see that you, you admire me, that you love me, that you wow about me. And if you start there, yes, that's from that place. I want you to follow me in that way, God says. Behold the man. Look at the man. That is that you can see him. Look at the man. Look at the one that is the son of God. And this look at the man is based on revelation. I know this is the son of God. You just plainly, you can look at the man and you know this is the son of God. But there's many people that looked at him. Say that, but that's the son of Joseph from Nazareth. That's the son of Joseph from, from Nazareth. You can follow him. He's an excellent man. You know, look at his character. Look at his integrity. He will not lie. He, he served with such honor, his dad. He's so admirable. You can really follow his example. That's the way that they looked at him. And so, my, my question to you is, is that actually how you live without knowing it? But they couldn't accept him as the son of God. How do you look at him? What is the revelation in your heart? Because you can admire him, you can talk so positive about Christ, about Jesus. But is he really the son of God or is he the son of of Joseph in your life. And leave that there. Keep in sight. Keep in sight the man. That means <clears throat> when he's going intense, I put focus in. This is not just I look at the man. This is not just I wow about him. I worship him. I adore him. I'm being captivated by his love and who he is. No. This is there's intensity. This is where it's not easy to see him. This is in the situation where you need to Put some focus, some energy in. Keep in sight the man. Where is he in this situation? God, and you press in with prayer. You press in with things that you say. You press in with how you believe. You press in when you know there's a lot of huaras that's speaking in your brain. But you're, you are not a dustbin. You are not some garbage can. Hello? So you need to focus beyond all of that. Where is Christ? I cannot go anywhere if I don't see him where he is because I need to go where he is. He said if I follow him, if I serve him, where he is, I will be. I stand on his promise. I will be where he is. Finish. Where is he in my success? You have success? Excellent. You had this major provision? Excellent. Where is he in that? You better know. Keep in sight the man. Put your focus in to understand where he is. Amen? Are you with me? This is all part of the fear of God because I respect him so much that I need to know where he is. Watch the man. Last one. Watch the man. Be awake. Be awake. For a sudden move, be awake. Watch. You know when the eagle is going to fly and is going to catch that spider? You know, then you must watch. Anybody want to say something? We're not going to catch a Spider-Man. Okay, where are you going to catch that fish or that snake? And somebody just said, watch there. And at that moment, you need to look there. Five seconds later, you missed it. Sudden move from God where it's just poof, that you can watch, you can see, you can hear. Abram, go and offer up Isaac. I looked at God. I heard him. I behold him. Because I worship, uh, Abram says to his servants and the donkeys. No, he didn't speak. His servants with the donkeys. And he said, we are going up the mountain to worship. He didn't say, we are going up the mountain so that I can kill my son. He didn't say that. He said, we are going up the mountain to worship. When last did you call that worship? 
I mean, he, he had a picture in his mind what's going to happen. How it's going to happen. Where is he going to put the knife? What will be the easiest? What will be the quickest? Where will you look when the possibility of see the pain and the anguish and the whatever in his son's face when he realizes my dad's going to slaughter me? I think he thought about all of that. Where will he think? Where will he look? Will he look at God and say, God, if it's this is it, this, will it be the heart? Will it be the, Will it be what? Hello? He would have thought about it. And with all that thinking, at the end of the day, he said to the servants, we are going up the mountain to worship. <laughs> That's a life with God. That is a man that really loves and honors and fears God. If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. If I understand it, there is no way that you can understand it. If you had all these hundred years, more than hundred years, that you trusted God, you walked with him, you believed for this miracle. And at least one St. Coral. What is a St. Coral? It's a St. Grain. At least one. One of them, of this trillion. I have one in my hand, and God said, go and slaughter it. What an awesome act of worship. <laughs> Are you with me? But then, as he behold the Lord, as he look at him, he's up the mountain, and he's ready, and his son is on the altar, and just when he wanted to do it, God said, wait, what am I saying? Watch. Watch the man. If you cannot watch the man and you are busy with your religious duties, I'm supposed to do this and I'm doing this, you will go and you will kill the Isaacs in your life. You will kill the destinies. You will kill the blessings. You will kill your future. Not the devil, you. And you will say, because God, you know in Christian walk, you just need to offer up everything. You just need to serve everyone. You just need to this. You just need to that. That's Abram going to kill Isaac. He goes up there and he slaughters the one Isaac after the other Isaac. In the name of religion. And you are feeling so good about yourself because out of love and respect for God, you are laying down your life. In the name of all stupidity and foolishness. May God help you. May God help me. So that we so walk with God. That when he, there's a sudden move. And God says, stop. I said you must do this. But now I say no. God is not confused. But wh what was this all about? It's, I want to walk with you. But in my walk with you, I wanted to know if you will be with me more than anything else. No, now I know that you love me and that you will withhold nothing from me. Therefore, I will bless you with the nations as inheritance. God said to him, Oh, my brother, may the fear of God be on your life. If it's not there, your following of Christ can be such a destructive religious walk. It can be a, such a destructive religious walk in your commitment to follow Christ if you don't allow the fear of God on your life where you behold him. And that you are prepared to behold him, to look at him, to keep him in sight, to watch that sudden moves from your master. Anybody for an amen? Let it be so. If you fear the Lord and serve him, serve him not as a curse, serve him. Serve under a curse if you don't fear him, if you don't understand the fear of God, if you don't do it as if unto the Lord, and if you cannot do it with him, you serve as a slave of sin. You serve under the curse of servitude. But you don't serve as an honor unto the Lord, and God wants to Purify that so that your serving is a laying down of life with a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest for you and the kingdom. It can be so. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Number three, then if you fear the Lord and serve him, then obey him. 
You obey him not just because you must, because you love him, because you worship him, because the fear of God is on your life. You don't argue with him. You will serve him. And in your serving, you will obey him. Because you can serve and you can miss what he's asking of you to do. Because so many times in what he would specifically ask you to do, he wants to surprise you. But serving based on just all the principles, but I'm not hearing the fresh agenda of today. The fresh agenda that God has for me tomorrow. It's quite a boring Christian walk you have. But if you can understand how to be fresh, to hear God in what and how you must obey Him, it can be awesome. It can be awesome. But I will obey, doesn't matter what. And then it's not... I obey you, Lord, but thank you for your protection. And in all of this, I know that you will be there. That is the next point where it says, do not rebel against his commands. Okay, that means I must, I must obey him. Also, sub, as also the king who reigns over you. Let the king not rebel, but obey the one that rules over you. Don't rebel against his commands. That's fighting it. That's reasoning about it. We can say, no, I will do, I will obey, and God will protect me. Sometimes you will not understand why people will obey God, and then they are martyred, they are slaughtered, they are killed, they are... Hello? Then the children are... Yeah. Things happen to the children in front of them if they don't renounce Christ. Where is the love in that? How can we pray for protection? Yes, you know, more and more in the end times, it will be a thing of, okay, the church must pray for protection, but certain things are also going to happen. What type of protection are you praying for? Yes, please, pray for protection on the road. Pray for that the angels will be there, there where you go. Pray, please. We, I testified about that. If you were not here, please find it on the our Father's Home channel, on the YouTube. Find it there and go and listen. And let it challenge you, please. But at the end of the day, the three friends of Daniel, what happened? We will follow Christ. We will not bow down. We will not bow down. In our following of the Lord, it means we will have the fear of God on our lives, not the fear of the fire. We don't fear your fire. We fear God. That's it. So we will go in that fire because we respect him. We will fear him. Because we fear him, we will obey him. We will not reason with him. Now, what do we do? Please, Lord, protect us. But then they say, even if our God don't protect us, even if your God don't protect protect you if he's not going to protect you still i will not serve and bow before this thing i will not i will not if god doesn't protect you in certain things in the future will you still love him and follow him what is, why, well, what is this protection at the end of the day but the protection is god Protect me that I will not walk away from you. That is the, the, the prayer of protection that you need to pray. God doesn't matter what. If the sin, if the temptation come my way. God protect me that my heart will not wander away. Protect me that my emotions will not be a trap. Protect me that my that my success will not be a curse. Protect me that I will not fall in discouragement with all the things that I still need breakthroughs in. Protect me in all of this, Lord, to be found in you, to be found in your will, to be found in the favor of God, to be found in a place where I bring you honor, to be found in the place where my life and my expression and my decisions says, I truly love you. Protect me for that, Lord. So that that will be part of my life. That is the prayer of protection for your life. Amen? I'm talking about all the principles in the way God said, if you want to follow me, start with the fear of the Lord. Hello? Start with the fear of the Lord. 
And in that way, you will serve me, you will obey me, you will not rebel, rebel against my commands, going into reasoning, going into arguments in your heart, and you don't even know that you are reasoning with God. You don't even know it, because you can so easily reason. So there's so many voices alive in you. You don't even know that you reason all, everything that he says, that you are interrupting him, and just carry on. If you don't respect somebody, if you respect somebody, you will not just interrupt. Hello? The fear of God will make that you will not just interrupt. You will know, you will come to know the thoughts from God. You will know what he is saying in you. You will give him the platform to speak in your mind, in your emotions, in your heart. You will know how to give him the platform to speak. Oh, I don't know his will. Maybe the fear of God is not on your life. Maybe he's not the f final one that you really respect. Maybe your issue or your frustration or all this thing or that thing, that is the one that you respect. And God must also come here in this place and explain how, why things are happening like this so that you can understand. You will not say he must come and explain himself. You will not tell him, Lord, come and explain why these things are happening to me. You will not say that. I will not say that. But my brother, my sister, if the fear of God is there, I speak to myself, I speak to you, then it's an open stage, it's an open area where you say, God, what are you saying? And the more you get that way of living, the more the platform will be clear in your mind and in your heart, in your emotions. There will be a platform where you just know God is speaking. God is speaking. God is here again. In his voice, God is saying, it will just become like that in your life. It will just become like that. Don't have a hell of a frustration in your walk with Christ. You don't need to have that. Just say, I don't need that in Jesus' name. And lastly, I just leaving, I leave it with that and then follow the Lord. Do it for him. Do it with him. And if you follow your good idea, you follow your religion, you, that religion will bring death. You follow him, it will bring life. The more you follow him, the more life will come. The more you walk with him, the more life. Because you walk with life. You walk with life, you will receive more life. But if you serve in the church, if you serve out there, and you feel I'm going to die is because somewhere you're not serving Christ and these principles are not in right order. God gives you these principles so that you are protected when you follow him. So that you are protected when you follow him. That the enemy cannot take you. The world cannot take you. Your flesh cannot destroy you. Therefore, he gives you principles how to follow him. Not just for the sake of principles, but he wants to protect you because he wants you to enjoy following him he doesn't want you just to go through a sacrifice and how you must sacrifice everything to follow him and have this war the whole time he wants you also to enjoy following him amen so let's say god i'm gonna follow you because i fear you i respect you there, in that way, I will serve you. I will obey you. I will not argue. And my following will be pure. God, I pray for us as a group, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us that we will not waste our time in religion. But that in the way that we follow you, that it will be genuine, it will be accurate, it will be pure. Not from a place of performance. Not in from a place where 3,000 things must come in line. No, but in simplicity. Understand how just to be genuine from our hearts with a respect for you. Arrest our focus in worship. Arrest us with who you are. God, so that from that place we are drawn to you. We are drawn to you, driven by your love and drawn in worship. 
And that's the place we want to serve. We want to express through our lifestyle that we love you, and that is what we call serve. Thank you for that, Father, that we have the, the privilege and the honor to obey the true and living God. So many billions, even. God that doesn't know you, and they, they're obeying so many forces from hell that brings destruction in their lives. God, what an awesome, awesome, awesome privilege we have to obey the true living God. That life can manifest through us in our obedience to the true and living God. Thank you for that privilege to know you, that we have to know you. And forgive us for, for the arguing with who you are, arguing where we don't understand what you are doing, Lord. Don't understand so many times your ways. No, we will follow you because you are pleased with faith. Thank you for that, my Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and we look with excitement to what you're going to do in the nations, in America, in our nation, in so many places, Lord, that you're going to work. You're going to, we are here to walk with you into that, Lord. We will not walk into the crisis. We will walk with you into whatever, wherever you go. That's our desire. That's our commitment through the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus. So we pray as all say, amen, amen. amen.